Hey y'all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about five reasons to stop throwing exceptions and what to do instead for a more robust, composable, and performant code base. So nulls may have been the billion dollar mistake, but exceptions are frequently the cause of bringing down prod. Here we'll walk through five reasons you should stop throwing exceptions in your code base and an alternative that often leads to a more robust, composable, and performant code base. So now, reasons exceptions suck, and you should probably stop using them. Now, the first reason is that exceptions break the type system. Exceptions are invisible in most languages. There's no way to tell if a function or any of those it calls throws a particular exception unless you step through all the code yourself. At scale, it's impossible to know all code in your system, so if the type system isn't helping you find those missed cases, it's often going to go unfound. And this is one of the big reasons that type safe systems are useful at scale. They help you understand what your code can can and can't do at scales where you can no longer fit the full system into your mental model. And this is basically going to be the case at any medium to large company, or if a code base has like a monolith that's been around for five years, there's just not going to be any way for you to be able to understand what every single code flow does. And even if you do at one point in time, if you have hundreds of engineers constantly landing commits, then one month from now, that's no longer going to be the case because, you know, a new feature will be rolled out that can or can't you know, have put an exception in there, and you'll have no idea that that was the case. But no matter how nicely typed your code or your code base is, exceptions negate those types entirely, making it harder to catch all cases and thus leaving more possibilities for errors to reach the end user. Like, I think it's always possible to, like, go one layer down and see if that function throws something, um, but it's probably infeasible and unrealistic to go, like, 10 functions down to see if that, that stuff throws exceptions, which is why leveraging the type system is so useful in definitely large code bases, but even small code bases. Now, I do want to do a quick note that some exception-based languages do support exception declarations. These are often called checked exceptions. Java is probably the best example of this. I think other languages have tried this out or might have some implementations of this, but I, I haven't seen it really common outside of Java before. Now, the second reason is that exceptions make it hard to handle all possible cases. Now, because the type system can't help you identify all possible exceptions, a function or those it calls throws, then you often leave some cases unhandled. Now, sometimes this is intentional if you don't want to handle those cases, but oftentimes it's just because you didn't know the possibility existed. To handle this, exception-based languages often end up doing catch-alls, catching all exceptions or at least all exceptions of a given type. It's very rare, like after doing a catch of like catch invalid type to also check like the, the exception message because typically exceptions are more blunt. They're a blunt instrument for doing that thing. Um, and so getting this kind of granular error handling is quite hard. And I'll say that this does work well for preventing a raw exception from bubbling up to the surface because you are like doing a catch all, catching everything that could happen, but it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of granularity. And now surely there's a difference in recoverability or handling between an invalid input exception and a too many requests received exception. Like here, we probably want to search something to the end user. So throwing exception could be nice for throwing a toast, but often what you actually want to do is give more information back to the front end. So it can be like, hey, this field itself is wrong. And here's maybe the rules for like um, an email address or something like that. Whereas an exception is kind of like you just follow the main exception flow um, and you'd have to like do extra handling to figure out um, how can I show this extra information to the user because exceptions aren't generally used for doing that. And too many requests received, you know, this could be a case where, well, maybe we just want to do a back off here. Maybe we don't want to just like throw and destroy the whole system because um, maybe that system's just under load and we want to try again later. This doesn't necessarily need to like break the whole control flow for us. And yeah, as I said, for like things like invalid input exceptions, you know, yeah, we probably want to add additional payloads, but like, and we can throw an exception for this, but is that the most ergonomic way? Or could you just create a type that better shows, here's the invalid input, here's the actual rules for it, um, so that our front end can handle it nicely and just show it to the user. Why do we need to take a copy of the stack trace? Why do we need to break the control flow for this? This is like not exceptional behavior. This is actually expected behavior. We know a user is going to input something wrong. So why don't we treat it as such? And I do want to call out that for exceptions where you can't recover, this blunt handling actually does make a lot of sense. Like there's nothing you can or would do about this exception throwing. So like why bother with all the possible cases? Just, you know, have one try catch and be done with it. But most errors are recoverable. And with no type system to help you understand all possible return values, it's easy to implicitly let recoverable errors go unhandled, 
leading to unexpected behavior and prod. Now, reason three is that exceptions break the control flow of your system. Exceptions use a different control flow than basically any other programming language feature. They are glorified go-to statements that bypass everything except for try-catch blocks your callers may have implemented, but as we've seen, often don't. And this makes it harder to reason about and fail gracefully with, leading to less robust systems. And as we've said, even when you do fail gracefully with like a try-catch-all, um, often you can't fail gracefully related to the specific type of error that happened. You kind of have to use the same error handling for everything which may or may not make sense for all the different errors in your system. Reason number four is that exceptions are slow, heavyweight operations. Now, exceptions are typically pretty slow constructs. They usually take a copy of the stack trace and then roll up the call stack to try and find the outer try catch. This is super useful for debugging errors and as a backstop for when unexpected things happen in your system, and they will happen in your system. But it is very wasteful if the error is something you expect to happen and will handle or recover from as most of that extra info will just be tossed anyway. And kind of using the, you know, example that we saw earlier where it's like an invalid input, like this is not exceptional behavior. We actually totally expect a user to give us an email address where they type in their name instead of the email address because they like read the thing wrong, right? This is very expected. So why would we roll up the whole stack trace for this when it's like, all we need to do is return to the area like the user, hey, you did this wrong. And in my TypeScript micro benchmarks, exceptions ran around 300 times slower than just using error values. So why would we spend those extra 300 times of cycles when we could just say like, hey, here's what you did wrong, here's how to fix it. Reason number five is that exceptions make it harder to compose robust systems. Composability is all about how easy it is to arrange and rearrange the logic blocks of your system into a new system that does something with decent quality. In general, a great system is highly composable, which means building with it feels like building with Legos. The pieces can fit together in a variety of ways and each output has reasonable robustness, testability, and performance. And this is part of what makes Legos so fun, right? Is that you have like all these different pieces um, that can be rearranged in basically any way. And there's like a standard way of putting these things together. It's easy. Um, with a set of pieces, you can make a ton of different outputs and they all have like pretty good quality. And that lets you run with your imagination versus like having to do like weird engineering to try and get some pieces to like fit together and stuff. Um, no, there's a standard. They all can be rearranged and it's pretty great. Now, because exceptions lack type safety, break control flows, and don't surface their possible cases, they are extremely hard to compose into a system without robustness issues. Each block that throws can now break all the blocks in the system, and there's no way to know if that block throws or not. It's like playing with Legos, and then every now and then you'll put uh, one Lego into it, and it breaks the whole thing, and it like shatters it. That would be so annoying. Um, to play with and you'd probably take that Lego out and you'd like toss it because it's like that Lego sucks You know, why would I do that? And it, it breaks everything when I can just get a different Lego that does the exact same thing But doesn't break my whole system and of course the safe approach that to this is to just wrap every single block with a try catch Again, that's not very ergonomic Like if you have try catches everywhere for every single function call It also removes the caller's ability to granularly handle exceptions because if you're just like catching everything and making it go down the same um code path that now your caller can't loses all control flow um, because you're basically making the decision for them. And of course, you may just be over catching, right? Like maybe some exceptions were exceptional and we want to know that in our logging pipeline so that we can go and debug it later. But if you're always catching everything to prevent this kind of like breakage, then it will never end up there. And we'll just have like weird behavior in prod because it's like we, something's going weird, but we don't know what, what it is or where the root causes. And so I want to stress that blocks that throw exceptions are basically foot guns waiting to go off and reduce the robustness and composability of the entire system that uses it. And thus are blocks that you should generally avoid. These are those like troublesome blocks that if you were building Legos with and it broke your thing every time you used it, you would just get rid of it because there's got to be a diff different or better block to use instead. So what should you use instead of exceptions? So exceptions lead to less robust composable and performance systems, but what should you use instead? And the answer is generally errors as values. We already return successes as values, so why not errors? These have several benefits including being fully type safe. It's really just a value. And so you can make types for your errors just as you can with a regular success payload. This means you leverage the full type system and therefore all callers will have to deal with the types 
and make an explicit decision on what to do based on what those types return. It also uses regular control flows. Again, it's just a value. And so you can do all of your if else stuff and have confidence that those things will actually get run. They're not magically gonna get skipped over because some random block decided to throw something. They're also more robust, you know, again, it's just a value. So you can leverage the full strength of your type system to cover all cases and you can granularly test all edge cases as well. Um, I've seen really big improvements in testability because you're not just being like, um, check if this thing throws, right? Assert throws, which is like not that useful, especially if you don't check the type of the exception because that throw could be for any number of reasons. Um, even if you do an assert throws, um, if you use an exception type, often there can be many reasons for that exception type. Like if you're doing input validation, you know, you'll probably just get back an invalid input exception or something. Um, but now you're gonna have to check like, okay, but is that for the field I want? And often people don't do this because it's, it's more troublesome. And then it's like, okay, well, maybe you'll go into the exception with the message, but now you're doing like raw string matching. Um, instead, if you just have your function, say what individual types of errors it returns, like this is an invalid email input, invalid age input, then you can now much better test that, hey, this failure case is actually failing on the thing I expect it to, not just like a random you know, error for some other reason. And usually what I found is that the more testable your code is, the more composable it is as well, because being more testable actually just means that your code is more usable because you're basically simulating what an actual user or caller would have to do to use your code in production. And so generally when you see these cases where doing something makes something more testable, that's often a good sign that um, this is a good direction for your code to go in. It's also more composable. It's just a value. Because it plays nice with the type system and control flows, you can build more robust blocks of logic that are explicit about what they do. This makes it much easier to compose these blocks together and be sure that you're covering all cases. And finally, it's more performant. It's just a value. No need to take a copy of the stack trace, unless you want to. If you want to, that's totally fine, but you can make that explicit choice and incur that explicit cost and because it's actually useful to you, not just because you weren't thinking or weren't explicit about what you actually wanted. And again, in my micro benchmarks, this is about 300 times faster than creating an exception in TypeScript. And yes, some exceptional cases will exist. They always will. There's always gonna be cases where we didn't expect and things like that. And even if you use errors as values, that will happen. But those will be limited to truly exceptional cases that can't or won't be handled. And this is like the ideal end state where um, there will be exceptions when things can't be handled. And that's totally fine um, because there are some things that like you just can't or won't want to handle. But in the intermediate time where you're like, implementing errors as values, there's going to be all of these cases that in the past have just been implicitly unhandled that you're going to start trying to, to handle. And that means there's still going to be exceptions even as you start implementing these things because you just haven't covered all the possibilities yet. But the key part about doing errors as values is that when you start to see these exceptions that are actually not exceptional and that can be handled, you now have like a robust way and standard and path to encode that in your system so that your block becomes more robust, but also all the other blocks know what to do with that, that knowledge. And so they can all benefit from that knowledge. And I think that's why, you know, this approach is so much better for producing composable blocks, but also leads to much better systems that compose together with this overall as well. And in the end, this leads to less vote guns and more sturdy building blocks, which again, leads to more robust, composable, and performance systems, especially at scale. Now, does this mean you should never use exceptions? So some people will argue yes, but I prefer a more pragmatic approach, which is, it depends. I think exceptions are great for cases where you can't or won't recover. So if there's nothing you can do about it, and you know none of your callers can do anything about it, then throwing can be a much simpler thing to do. I think a great example of this is like you expect a database to exist, um, like your primary database, but like in startup, you can't find it. Like that's exceptional, right? There's like nothing you can do to recover from that um, because you, this is a dependency that you need. And so you should throw on that. You should throw hard um, so that someone can look into it because like your app just cannot function without the database. But I just want to note that you are making that choice for all of your callers and you need to weigh the pros and cons for that. And this is akin to seeing a problem and panicking because you're not sure what to do about it. In some cases that is useful, but in most it's really not. And I think errors as values should be used in basically every other case. This is because in most situations, panicking is not the most rational decision. There's almost always a better way to handle a situation than that, even if you are not the one actually handling it. By encoding errors as values, you give your callers the option to handle the issue if they have a better way to, thus providing more control to your callers and making your building block that much more solid and useful. 
next. Now, if you wanna get started with errors as values, I highly recommend looking into results success failure types. These are an ergonomic universal method for representing a type that can have either a success or failure payload, and in my opinion, is strictly better than the bool with reason, which is usually like a tuple where the first is bool saying is success, and um, the next one is string, which is like the error type that is prevalent in many languages like Go and Python because it is more flexible in the types it can hold and leverages the type system to ensure that on success cases, it's always a success type and on failure cases, it's always a failure type. Now, once you're comfortable with that, there's a whole world of operations that make results even easier to work with, including row rig programming, libraries for composing results and additional types, but you can worry about that stuff later. Results will get you far with minimal learning requirements. Now, if you like this post, you might also like build a simple result type in Python and why you should use them. You might also be interested in TypeScript, errors as values as exceptions, performance benchmarks, which is the micro benchmark I mentioned in this post. And finally, types versus node types, how types allow code to scale across developers, organizations, and lines of code. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.